If you ever tried to make a car animation over automotive cinematic in Unreal Engine, you probably use Chaos Vehicle to make this perfect curve you want for your shot or for a client. You did it again, again and again and again. Finally, you have spent an hour to nail this perfect tone which you desired so much. You create your sequence, add recorded take, place cameras, render it and send it to the client if you work commercially, only to get this response. And at this point you start questioning if you really need to use Chaos Vehicle for car animations. Because after this comment from the client you need to start from scratch. Yes, Chaos Vehicle is a perfect game asset. You can use it for personal projects and for playing around. It has great physics. Physics is cool and stuff. But the truth is, it sucks. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are there for the first time, I'm lead and real engine artist in post-production company and I'm mostly focused on automotive CGI and animations. In today's video we will get into simple automotive recreation, make some widgets for animation and learn how to make this kind of sequence almost effortless. That's also how it's done by Impossible Object Studio and you have probably seen the cinematic of Alfa Romeo where they have used their custom car rig. I still find this approach far away from perfect, but it will definitely make your life easier with the car animations. For this tutorial I will be using the free Ford Mustang model which I found in the internet. I will create skeleton with Blender add-on called UE4 Vehicle and it will be our starting point. I'm not going to spend a lot of time for explaining in details how it works in Blender. There are a bunch of videos showing it. Basically you select every wheel and body of the car with picker and click rig vehicle. export it and slap to Unreal Engine. You can also download this Ford model already prepared for import to Unreal from the link in the description. So if you'd like you can pause the video right now, download it and create the rig together with me. When importing model make sure that the skeletal mesh box is checked. If all is correct you will have three assets, mesh, skeleton and physical asset. Open physics asset and select all wheels collision bodies. Change primitive types to sphere and click regenerate bodies. Select body collision, change primitive type to multi-convex hole and again click regenerate bodies. You may need to do that in case if you would like to collide your control rig with some props in your cinematics and it's better to have proper collision bounds for that. Afterwards right click on skeletal mesh, create control rig. Now let's program the control rig. Open control rig asset. Here we have our car bone structure which consists of 5 bones root for body and whole mesh and bone for each wheel which is rear left wheel, rear right, front left and front right. It's the typical naming which you get from Blender than I used for rigging. First thing we are going to create is control for the root. Right click on the root, select new, control. It will tilt body of the car. Click F2 to rename it and name it body. Next is wheel rotation control. I will create it from wheel but it doesn't matter where you create the control itself. I will name it wheel rotation. And lastly, steering control. Now we need to create new null, which will store our controls. It is very important that the null is not connected to any bone of the car or any other control. Otherwise rig will not work properly, so please pay attention to it. Right click on empty field, not a bone or any other control and select new null. Let's name it control space. Select all your controls and drag them under control space we just created. Now let's change colors of the controls to make our rig a little bit fancy later. Body will be blue, rotation yellow and steering green. Pick whatever you like. After it's done pick body control and drag to node graph. Select get control. After that drag root bone to node graph and select add offset. It will add relative offset to our root bone. As we only need to feed rotation to the body, expand transform pin on both nodes and connect only rotation. Let's check how it works. Drag forward solve output to offset transform. Select body control and try to rotate it. Great, it works, but we don't want it to affect our wheels. Uncheck box propagate to children. Now let's test it again. Alright, it works perfect. Now we will create steering control. It's very important in which order those controls are executed. So you can't create wheel rotation before steering, otherwise you will get super weird results. 
drag steering to node graph and select get control, expand transform and translation. We will use movement on Y axis to steer the wheels. Drag Y pin and look for multiply node. Set the B value to 0.35, in my opinion it works best. Now look for the node called from Euler. Expand the pin and connect result of multiply node to Z. Now select two bones, front left and front right wheels and drag them to node graph. Select add offset. Expand offset transform pins. Connect rotation result from Euler. Now drag execute pin from previous controls to wheels. Don't forget to connect all offset control execute pins, so both wheels will turn. Fantastic, now we can easily control our car steering. To make our control rig a little bit more clean, let's create the sequence node. This node will dictate the order of our transforms. First goes body, second is steering, last will be wheel rotation. If for some reason initial position of your wheels are not straight, check in control details that it doesn't have any offset on Y axis, like in my case I needed to reset it. After that initial wheel position was fine. I will make also some comments for controls to make it look even better. Now the hardest part, which is wheel rotation, and we are done, I promise. Right click in node graph window and type get control float. In the node select wheel rotation control. Drag float value pin and create multiply node. I use value 50 as after tests I found it works the best for me. Now multiply this again. Drag B value pin and type half P. Drag result of this calculation and look for node accumulated time. Next, look for node from Euler. And connect accumulated time to Y axis. Drag all four wheel bones into node window. As usual, select add offset. Expand offset transform for each bone and connect result to rotation of each bone. Now I will make my rig look tidy. I will add another pin for the sequence node and will connect everything in the rotation graph. At this point I can accelerate and reverse all of the wheels at once, control steering and body tilt. If you'd like, you can start animating right now with the current setup, but I decided to add some shapes and add some limits to them to make the rig look more fancy as I said before. It's super easy to do, select any of your controls, select shape and change shape size. Also, I changed control type for body to a rotator, so only rotation will be present in the sequencer, which makes it easier to use. After that, I set limits to min and max values from minus 3 to 3. So no matter how far I rotate, car body will not break its bounds. After that I set limits for each of the controls. For steering it is minus 50 to 50.
for wheel rotation, set the type of transform to position, it's important. So you just drag it back and forth for wheel rotation. Limits for wheel rotation are minus 20 to 20 on X axis. After all of that, hit compile and save. As always done, I will show you what I managed to make in a couple of minutes. I attached control rig to camera rail and animated its position. After that, I have played around with the wheel rotation values to make wheels rotate properly on start and end. It's nothing special, just a line value when the car breaks or starts. I find this approach much better than animating each wheel individually because you need to calculate how much of the rotation should be applied to the wheel for the car traveling a certain distance. And this is much better. You just set up the values from zero to some point when the car accelerates or brakes until the point it feels real. After that, I tilted body a bit to add the feeling of acceleration and braking. In approximately five minutes, I had this result. Okay, super easy to do. Now, would you like to see how I did that, what I showed you in the beginning of this video? Okay, sure, but first, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. This really helps me with the production of the new episodes. In this Mustang Drift and the City Sample project, I used same approach. I have created a rig rail, attached control rig to it, and animated car steering, wheel rotation, and body tilt. Added a bit of transform on your rotation of the control rig asset to make it drift. Then I have created camera, added some camera shake, made a render and did a little of color grading. Who am I lying to? I color graded that a lot in DaVinci Resolve. Added some sound effects and it's done. Creating this sequence with hand animation took me about 15 to 20 minutes, but creating the same thing with Chaos Vehicle would take me about an hour. And if client asks me to make car move slower or faster, I will just change a couple keyframes instead of starting from a scratch. As I mentioned in the beginning, using physically accurate assets is not very productive as it gives you unpredictable results and doesn't suit the animation pipeline. On real car commercials, director has precision driver, a person who drives professionally and can make desired turn, curve or drift or accelerate at desired rate to perform a perfect take the director is looking for. In case of Chaos Vehicle, you also need a precision driver, but well, in Unreal Engine. It is very time consuming and this approach is horrendous when you need to make changes from the client's comments. I know there are a lot of add-ons which you can buy and get proper car simulations with suspension, physics and stuff, in Blender for example, but on real project it makes you jump back and forth between this software for any changes that client demands, baking and import animations from Blender, Maya or use a live link to feed it to Unreal. That can increase your delivery times and I'm not taking into account the price for such add-ons or Maya itself. This is the reason why we mostly see cars driving on straight line on CGI videos, on flat road, barely making any turns. In my opinion, it's much better to have everything in one software and not jumping back and forth in them, so creating the control rig in Unreal Engine and hand keying the animation of it would be a much better and more practical solution. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.